Mary Kingsley, Explorer, Lesson 9, Daredevils One day, Mary Kingsley decided to take a shortcut through the dense African brush, bush. That wasn't a good idea. Without warning, the ground suddenly gave way under her feet, and she tumbled 15 feet straight down into a game trap. Local hunters had lined the bottom of the pit with nine-foot-long spikes. Kingsley survived with only bruises because she was wearing a thick woolen skirt. Otherwise, as she wrote in 1897, I should have been spiked to the bone and done for. What was Kingsley doing in Africa? Today, her travels would be no big deal. Many modern women head off around the world in search of adventure. But in the 19th century, such boldness was shocking. Other people's expectations, however, did not stop Kingsley. She went exploring in Africa three times between 19, 1893 and 1900. Her daring and courage rivaled those of such famous male explorers as Richard Burton and Henry Moran Stanley, Rudyard Kipling, the famous writer, knew Kingsley. Being human, she must have been afraid of something, he said, but no one ever found out what it was. Mary Kingsley was born in England in 1862. The first 30 years of her life were anything but exciting. Like many other girls at this time, she did not go to school. Still, she was not uneducated. She learned by reading books and listening to family conversations. Although her father was trained as a doctor, his true passion was anthropology. He roamed the world to study native cultures from the South Seas to the American Rockies to West Africa. One of Mary Kingsley's uncles was a sea captain. Another was a well-known English novelist. Such role models must have fired her imagination. Yet, even as a young adult, she rarely left the house. She spent most of her time inside doing housework and tending to her sick mother. Later, her father, too, became an invalid. As a dutiful daughter, Kingsley nursed both her parents. In her spare time, she prepared her father's notes on sacrificial rites in West Africa for publication. In 1892, her parents died within six weeks of each other. Suddenly free from family obligations, Kingsley did not waste any time. She sold the family home and made plans to go to Africa. She wanted to see for herself what she'd only heard her father talk about or had read in books. Kingsley's goal was to investigate fish species and native customs of West Africa. She would go to parts of Africa where no white person had ever gone before. What's more, she would do it with only a few African guides. Kingsley made two trips to West Africa. In 1893, she stayed for six months. Then, in 1895, she returned and remained for nearly a year. During those fairly brief excursions, she saw and did more than most people do in a lifetime. She collected insects and found species of fish, three of which were named for her. She taught herself how to canoe through rapids. Despite the intense heat of West Africa, she always dressed as a proper English lady. She wore a white blouse and a long black woolen skirt. Mary Kingsley never used her gender as an excuse. If a man could do something, so could she, and she could. Usually do it better. Richard Burton once climbed to the 13,760-foot summit of Mount Cameroon. A couple of other men had also climbed it. They all took the easy western route. Kingsley chose the much more difficult southeast route, and she did it in bad weather. Kingsley's polite manner disarmed all those she met. She would pop up in the weirdest places and say, It's only me. On the ship to Africa, passengers were not supposed to go to the engine room or the bridge. That didn't stop the ever-curious Kingsley from inspecting both. In West Africa, she would show up at a trading village or a native gathering and simply announce, It's only me. Kingsley said those words so African, so often, Africans thought her name was only me. Naturally, Africans were fascinated by her. Many had seen a few white men before, but none had ever seen a white woman. Children, she reported, often rolled in the street and howled in shock at the sight of her. But since she came only to study and to trade, the village elders treated her with kindness. At one point, Kingsley visited the Fang people of Gabon. They were feared throughout West Africa for their ferocity. Totally unafraid, Kingsley went to visit them, because she wanted to study their customs. She won their trust by her gentle behavior. One night, the Fang chief honored Kingsley by letting her stay in his hut. Soon, however, she noticed a strange odor. She found the source, some small bags. 
I took down the biggest one, she later wrote. I then shook its contents out in my hat for fear of losing anything of value. They were a human hand, three big toes, four eyes, two ears, and other portions of the human body. Although she often suffered from malaria, Kingsley loved every minute in Africa. Lying ill on the floor of a mud hut or in the damp bottom of a canoe was all part of the experience. Skylarking, or stalking Africa, was what she called it. Her adventures, she wrote, took all the color out of other kinds of living. In 1897, Kingsley published her memoirs, Travels in West Africa. She left out some of her wilder exploits because she didn't want to overdo it. If she told the whole truth, she felt, some people would reject the book as a pack of lies. But in her lectures, she told some of these other tales. Once, for example, a fang guide shot a gorilla just as it was about to kill her. Another time, a crocodile climbed into her canoe. She had to beat it off with a paddle. In 1899, Kingsley planned to go back to West Africa, but the Boer War broke out in South Africa. England was at war with the Dutch settlers known as Boers. Kingsley felt it was her duty to help with the war effort. She reached South Africa in 1900. There, she nursed wounded Boer prisoners in a makeshift hospital. It was not a pleasant task. All this work here, she wrote, the stench, the washing, the bedpans, the blood, is my world. Many of the prisoners died of entric fever. Kingsley soon got the fever, too. She died within three months on June 3, 1900. By her own request, she was buried at sea the following day. Mary Kingsley was just 37 years old. But what a life she had packed into those last seven years.